With me today is Mark Diamond, the CEO of Antisense Therapeutics, to talk about a breakthrough in long COVID that potentially could offer some treatments for people who are suffering from this. So, Mark, great to have you back and exciting to hear about this. So give me the highlights and then we'll uh, dig into it a little deeper. Terrific, Jane. And once again, it is a pleasure to be talking with you today on, as you said, this very important news out of Antisense Therapeutics. And just as you described, it is an initiative that uh, that we've undertaken in long COVID patients. And, and Jane, in this circumstance, we've focused on the, the long COVID patients who have had the neurological symptoms of the disease. And so these are known as uh, long neurocovid patients. We do know that uh, the patients that that suffer from these symptoms have uh, shown uh, you know, disability in terms of when they've been assessed under memory tests. So we, you know, we we have really sort of focused this initiative in that patient population, knowing that there's a, a really a desperate need for you know better ways to treat these patients. The, the view is there's probably something like around 20 million Americans presently, you know, that have. That have long neural COVID, so you know we we, we think this is a, a really important uh, endeavour, and we're very excited by the preliminary outcomes that we've been able to report here. Yeah, no, I have a friend who actually had that during COVID, and then still, kind of every once in a while, will be like, I think it's still that long COVID, and it was like a year ago that he had this. So, the brain fog is is one of the main things. Are there any other neurological symptoms that come along with this? It's uh, it's the main it's the main you know one that impacts them, but memory loss, of course, it, uh, is a is another you know important adverse event. Got to go hand in hand, if you like, with the with the brain fog. So right. they're the two sort of key debilitating symptoms that 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 you know the clinicians are most sort of concerned about when looking at the neural aspects of the disease. Yeah, no, and I know um, some folks are even having trouble in meetings and things, kind of trying to run a meeting. Um, you know, because of this. So, so tell me about what you discovered. Sure. So, uh, firstly, maybe just a little bit of background on the program that we conducted, Jane, and then you know, I can talk to the to the outcome. So, we uh, collaborated with a, a world leader in the field of of COVID, a long COVID uh, treatment. Uh, it's a he is a professor, uh, Dr. Igor Krownik. He's based at Northwestern Hospital uh, in the NeuroCovid Clinic in Chicago in the USA because we were uh, aware of a, a technology that that we'd used in the development of our drug for Duchenne muscular dystrophy. And we've talked to that drug before, Jane, our drug AT1102. We had proposed to Igor about you know how how a uh, comprehensive that review would be. And in fact, we think and understand it to be the, the most extensive review of long COVID patients ever conducted, you know, of the power of this uh, somologic proteomics analysis to look at such a you know wide range of, of markers. And so we were able to assess the blood samples of patients that had these you know, neurological uh, symptoms, and we were able to uh, compare them against patients who had, who had convalesced or had recently recovered from their long COVID and also to healthy subjects. So we had quite a large number of samples, over 40 patients that we're able to assess here, Jane, looking at these blood uh, samples. And what we were really looking to do in this exercise was to see which of these uh, proteins were being what we call modulated, being you know increased in the blood of these patients with uh, long neural COVID through the exercise. And it was a massive undertaking to look at you know, the database that was created here of you know, the 7,000 proteins and having a look at which of these proteins were being impacted. We were able to, uh, through this exercise, identify a, a couple of proteins that were modified when you assess them together, uh, were able to uh, essentially identify all the patients, the 48 patients, as having long COVID. Mm -hmm. And so what? So what we've gone and done is we've filed uh, patents around, you know, these uh, particular targets as a potential diagnosis for the disease because, Jane, there really is a, a, a very uh, strong need for a better diagnosis of these patients. It's been, 
you know, people have undertaken to do that, but it's been in uh, a very challenging uh, environment for people to be able to identify these uh, uh, these targeting uh, tools for, for patients with uh, long COVID. Wow. Oh, that's absolutely fascinating. 7,000 proteins. And thank goodness, I guess, for technology that allows you to kind of sift through that so a human doesn't have to do it. Okay, so you, you so you think you may have identified the protein that is associated that people have that would be susceptible to long COVID and, and you're applying for patents for um, a treatment for that or what exactly? Yes, yeah, so, so initially, as I said, uh, well, we've identified some targets that, that we think could be very helpful diagnostic tools for for. Uh, being able to identify patients with long COVID, which you know for, would make for better quality clinical trials, because that's been one of the challenges of clinical trials undertaken today is about patient selection. So, uh, yes, we file patents around the diagnosis, but to your point about uh, potential treatments, what we've also identified other uh, proteins in the blood that we think, if you know they were uh, if they were targeted by therapeutics, could be effective drugs for the disease. So we think we found you know, over a dozen of these targets, Jane, that we know actually to be modulated by existing drugs and therapies that are on the market today. So these are drugs marketed by other companies. We suspect they don't know. Right, <laughs> right. Identified that their drugs are having this effect. So one of the strategies we have is to uh, approach these companies and, and uh, show them the data under confidentiality. And, and what uh, we would emphasise is the patents that we filed around. This is a potentially an exciting opportunity for these companies to be able to, to test their drugs for this disease. And so that is a, 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 an important outcome from the study. Uh, one other um, very uh, in, you know, exciting uh, development from the program as well too Jane, is that we've actually identified a blood marker that we know has the potential to be modulated by our drug AT1102. So the same drug that you know we've been talking about for uh, for Duchenne's is showing you know to have potential activity you know in and patients with uh, with long COVID. So again, you know we're very keen to continue the exploration of, 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 you know, that early data. We filed patents around it. And uh, what we're looking to do is to uh, seek grant funding in collaboration with Eagle Corralnik in, you know, at the Northwest and to be able to continue the the development of, uh, you know, the pro of the drug for that indication. You know, for instance, the probably the next step for a, uh, a program with H1102 in, in long neural COVID would be a phase two study in patients that have the disease. And because we've got a lot of the safety data already established on this drug in Duchenne's patients, you know, we think we can move very seamlessly into those type of clinical studies. And again, we'd be looking to do that through uh, partnering or funding um, collaborations with uh, with third parties. Very interesting. And also potentially, I guess, there could be some kind of preventative move. You might be able to identify people who have this particular protein and maybe they would have a sense of ur urgency about getting a vaccine or, you know, or something like that if they know they're susceptible to long COVID. Is that potentially yes. something that could happen? So, Jane, I think that being able to monitor patients who have these symptoms and being able to assess what's happening, you know, with these proteins that we know to be modulated, I think would be very ha helpful for physicians in the treatment strategies for these patients. So maybe not in terms of uh, bringing a prevention, but being able to identify these patients, seeing, you know, what's happening in their blood, which mm -hmm. is a marker of, you know, what the, the disease is clearly doing in the body, and then be able to track that you know, over time to see if they're seeing changes and improvements and hopefully also therapeutic strategies may be able to implement drugs that they know are going to affect that target that's, that is being modulated in that particular patient. So we think that's, you know, the really exciting feature, you know, of, of, of the diagnostic application is it giving physicians more you know, a control and better um, opportunity to deliver effective you know, treatments to their uh, to their patients. Thank you so much, Mark, for joining me and sharing that news. It's uh, great to hear about the progress there.
Oh, thank you, Jack. Thanks for the opportunity. And, uh, yeah, we're very excited by it and, and, you know, looking forward to continuing to advance this initiative.